As a composer, I'm often wondering what makes the modern equivalent of classical music different from popular styles. Popular most music around us certainly is, given the pervasive presence of numerous varieties. But what on earth does the distinction even mean? Why is classical music not popular, even when it is very popular with a small p? And what are serious composers serious about? To me it's got nothing to do with innate judgments of quality, this music is better than that music sort of thing, nor is it about how the music is socially adopted, say for dancing rather than listening with your eyes shut, nor is it even about the vast disparity in listenership between mass consumed and art musics, huge though that numbers gap clearly is. Measuring art according to how many people like it seems to me hopelessly lazy, for as Richard Middleton has written, such approaches measure not popularity, but just sales. Now I think the distinction starts with what the composer intends for the music, basically whether its emphasis lies with direct consumption or with artistic durability. I must start by admitting that even this distinction is full of holes and grey areas. For a start, my distinction isn't a timeless one, but it's very much a facet of our modern musical world. Back in Haydn's time, new music was to a much greater extent a single thing. The popular air and the masterpiece could be sides of the same coin, or at least come from the same pen. Mozart noted that his concerto would appeal to ordinary listeners while still having something for the expert. I've struggled to think of art music that convincingly straddles those ownerships today, delighting experts but still being whistled in the street too. Is that just our fault as writers? Well I don't think it is, for we're part of an immense social tide flowing over the centuries that carries us into different roles according to time and place. After Beethoven, the composer was steadily elevated as a social figure. That artist was no longer seen as a just skilled trader knocking out whatever you needed. Beethoven wasn't above selling his folk song arrangements to the highest bidder, but his reputation as composer-artist far overtook its predecessor, the composer-artisan. Later Romantic composers, imbued with this new status, still enjoyed lighter projects, but these were now separable in formal shape and certainly in scale from their symphonic works. Of course, Europe had its popular art composers, heroes like Wagner and Verdi, but they were popular or successful composers, rather than composers of popular music. So it's my belief that the distinction really lies in intentions that have markedly diversified. This is not to attack popular culture in itself, even if I feel that pervasive trivialities in the media are squashing the life out of artistic endeavour which after all promises struggle and no guarantee of reward. Most of us as art composers would love our music to be popular, but our project is a different one. The goal is not to reach the widest audience by confirming a broad set of expectations, like a popular song, say, but to create an experiential journey that may discomfort and challenge, but remains individual. This involves trying to balance expectation with surprise in a way that requires the listener to pick up a good deal of local landscape, often from scratch, helped by some universal tools of coherence, repetition, contrast. This is not willful obscurantism by composers in an ivory tower. The goal of art is not to mystify in itself, but it is to intrigue. And work that gives up all its secrets in one go is quickly discarded. Consumers consume, after all. Unless there's something really to chew on, some argument worth having, it's all gone in one gulp. We need things in our world that create experiential places of extraordinary weirdness and delicacy, but this takes the highest level of effort from both parties. The listener is a creative force too. The part of an artwork that we do recognise from stylistic expectation is sometimes called redundancy. Art that ticks off all our expectations has high redundancy meaning it doesn't offer any surprises. Many styles of modern art music have very low redundancy, meaning there's very little in the way of cultural context to help us find patterning, and still less within the music itself. The composer is leading the listener on a hazardous journey that twists and turns and certainly demands concentration. For most composers then, the aspiration to say something, to carve out a space, prioritises what is new or individual. At the same time, broad expressions of shape or landscape 
beginning, middle and end as it were, will draw upon redundancy of some kind to help the listener. Of course, the less music we listen to in any language, the less redundancy we have. We don't know what to expect. It would be quite wrong though to leave communication out of the sketch of the modern composer's intention. I don't know a fine composer who is not a communicator by aspiration. Any good composition makes use of some redundancy. For example, a recurring idea, one that creates an imaginative space we start to recognise. That's part of where the composer wishes to take us. Yet, this is a different process from that of reaching out to a listenership with what they already recognise. The roar of recognition that greets a big hit in a big stadium is a good image of the embrace of the popular, but composition is something else. The painter Frank Auerbach said, to do a painting that one knows how to do is not art, it's painting. Painting has got all sorts of interesting things about it, but art is discovery. Art is adding something to the world.